just about burnt it, y'all. Oh my goodness. Turn this down. Cook us a hamburger helper for the kids, y'all. That's what they asked for today. But I just want to come on here right quick and just share my thoughts with everyone and just tell everyone, don't give up. I know it's hard. I know a lot of families are facing a lot of a lot of challenges right now, difficulty in this economy. And, you know, I just left the grocery store and I'm like, oh, I might can pick up some fruit, you know, because I'm not trying to buy no cookies and chips because they eat them all in one day. So I said, well, let me try to buy something healthy, you know. So I ended up, you know, did get some bananas. I added that to our fruit basket over here, you know. So they've been eating these, these little, um, these little um, oranges fairly quick enough. Um, I think I got this big bag at Walmart, and I paid almost like I like ten dollars for this. But I knew this is something that they can grab in the mornings and eat, you know, on their way out the door. Cause my children don't eat breakfast. I don't know if y'all children eat breakfast, but mine, they don't eat breakfast, and um. So, you know, it's just one of those things trying to raise children nowadays, trying to get them on healthy eating habits. Um, someone uh, mentioned to me the other day, they said, you really didn't realize it was going to be this challenge in raising teenagers? And I was like, no, I really didn't realize it was going to be this challenge in raising teenagers. Like, y'all, it's like, and I'm, it's not about me, but it's like maybe some of y'all can agree. Like, I've been, like, under, like, it's like I've been under, in a cave. I'm always going to say water because I love water. So many things have opened my eyes up recently. Personal relationship, family relationships, um, relationships with myself. Like, I have been, like, buried, like, tunnel vision. Like, I've only seen what I want to see. And now it's like everything's come to the light. And, like, now I'm dealing with all this stuff, all these emotions, all these issues that I'm trying to work through, right? On top of trying to build my business, trying to make sure my children are emotionally equipped, you know, that they're not lacking as much as I could possibly help, you know, pouring into their lives and everything like that. And so it's just like, I know y'all going through it. So that thing I was saying, I'm, I'm at the grocery store trying to pick out, you know, something healthy to eat that's not going to go bad quickly. It's something that's going to be, you know, fulfilling for them because they're teenagers, so they do eat like adults. So, you know, I have to try to buy stuff that they can eat, you know, throughout the day while they're home. And then tomorrow, we're about tomorrow when tomorrow comes. But, you know, I just think like sitting here thinking like before they come home, cause like I told you, I don't video record when they're home. I try to turn everything off and turn myself on to them. I try to be present for them, to them. Um, so that means I have to cut down on my social media we have to watch a movie together we have to sit down and talk or we have to clean up the house together we have to go somewhere together as a family that's just what i'm having to do y'all and try to figure it out and make my money the best way i can make my money um i had a picked up a notary appointment yesterday at the last minute i was able to do it thank god i was able to pick up a notary appointment for tomorrow i was able to pick up a general notary appointment as well yesterday but um, my kids do understand that I have to um, look at my phone from time to time to check my emails and my text messages because that's how I get um, a lot of my appointments in my business. Also, with my eBay sales or Amazon sales, I might get an email that a customer has purchased something from the website. So I have to get ready to find that item and package it up to have it sent out because a lot of my um, orders are on same day, one day, one day, same day um, shipping. So it's very important, I say, on top of that. But family is way more important. So like I was saying, like, I know it's hard. I know y'all going through it, but don't give up. Stay encouraged. Y'all can do this. We can do this. Hang in there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see my little Mighty Dollar um, apron? I still don't know if this is the way it go, y'all. But y'all let me know if y'all like it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know. But anyway, because, um, you know, with hamburger meat, it has a lot of grease and stuff. And I want to pop on my shirt. This is my shirt, my son, when we thought we was going to Liberty. But he didn't, so I just wear this shirt. You know, I'm not really into dressing up unless I have to go out and, you know, dress up and put on any particular clothes. But normally I just wear my T-shirt and my little leggings around the house and, you know, and just, you know, do what I do. I wore my hat today because I went out and I didn't know if it's going to rain or not. And I didn't want the elements to get in my hair. But I just want to tell you all, don't give up. Hang in there. Please hang in there. You know what I'm saying? Figure out a way to make you some money. I know it's hard. You know, it's hard. I went out this morning after I dropped the kids off to school because that's something I do try to do now. I do try to take them to school every morning, but I make them ride the bus home. So after I um, dropped them off to of school, I cut on the DoorDash app to try to see if I can get at least twenty, thirty dollars You know what I'm saying? Right quick. Dead. All I made was like, I think $13. 
That's it. I had to turn it off. I had I went to the Chick Fil A parking lot, sat there thinking I was gonna get an order because Chick Fil A normally be bumping, but it didn't do anything. So I just came home, did what I needed to do around the house, jumped on live ops, worked my shift for live ops. Now I'm here getting ready for my kids to come home, feed them, talk to them, see how their day was going, and you know, just you know, stay positive, stay positive. You know, have my you know, write in my journal before I go to bed at night, what my steps are for tomorrow, and just do the best I can do. You know, you have to put forth effort. You can't just wish and hope. You have to put forth action to make things happen in your life. So when I say I write in my journal, I have a game plan. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. And I check it off, you know, as I do it. And if something comes up that I can't do it or I don't have enough time, then I'm just moving on to the next day. I don't try to let myself get discouraged. You know what I'm saying? And I always try to listen to something positive. Positive affirmations, positive motivable, motivation YouTube videos, or positive um, music. Something positive because you need that because life is hard. Life can get you down. That in order to get a breakthrough in that area, you're going to have to have a breakout. So I'm going to speak to this today because we normally get quiet when it's time to sacrifice. Today's subject is the mute challenge. talking about the mute challenge. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right. One of the most um, amazing events in the whole Bible, in my opinion, everybody has their own, is when the Lord told Solomon, ask for whatever you want. Here's what's amazing. All of our campus pastors, we come together uh, over the weekend and we talk about our scriptures and Pastor Rayma texted me and said, Pastor, this is crazy because you and I have the same scripture. And his, the name of his subject is, this is a blank check. <laughs> same scripture, two totally different perspectives. God says to him, he says, Solomon, ask for whatever you want. This man says, I can have anything, God. God says, anything you want. He says, okay, you really mean anything? God says, I mean anything you want. Guess what he asked for? <laughs> Wisdom and knowledge. Now, let's just, let's just stop up and through here for a second. God comes to you in your house and says, Jacqueline, you can ask for anything you want. What you asking for? God, anything? Okay, I want some Louis Vuittons. I want, I want some Louis Vuitton. I want a Hermes bag. Brothers, what you want? Lord, I want an Escalade dog. I want a house and a Rockwilder. <laughs> Dudes, always got to have a dog. Don't even know nothing about dogs. Just want one. You see, because I don't know if there is anybody in this room, and I'm not saying there isn't, I just don't know if there's anybody in this room if God said, ask for what you want. You would say, Lord, I just want a little more wisdom and a little bit of knowledge. I know some of y'all will be like, God, can you take care of uh, uh, Tasha? Because she, if she, if she getting on my nerve, you start naming people, things, and places. But the man asks for wisdom and knowledge. Now, now here is the amazing thing about it. At the time that God asked him, he was 20 years old. See, this is the thing that blows people's mind because we think of monarchy and kings as older people because of our context. In the times uh, of scripture, uh, there were pharaohs that were 14 years old. At 19, 20 years old, the Lord asked him what he wanted and he had enough wisdom at 19 and 20 years old to say he wanted wisdom and knowledge. That lets me know that wisdom isn't a function of age, it's a function of decision. Because you can be a 65-year-old fool and you can be a 20-year-old wise person. You are not wise because of how long you lived, you're wise based on how you lived those years. I, I say it this way, people always tell you, I've got 20 years of experience. Well, there's a difference between having 20 years of experience and one year of experience 20 times. At 20 years old, 
when all of his homies was wearing Jordans. At 20 years old, when all of his friends were driving Ferraris, Solomon said, give me wisdom and give me knowledge. Old fools used to be young fools. And I think that we live in a society that everybody's trying to be so smart. But I, I got you. Right? Have you ever seen somebody make a post online and then the next 20 comments is some smart person that debunks the thought that they didn't even have enough creativity to come up with? Everybody's so smart these days, but the world is going to hell in a handbasket because we got a whole lot of geniuses, but no wisdom. Because wisdom is not knowledge, wisdom is the correct usage of knowledge. Do you know you can have two degrees and not be wise? You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're pushing through things and things aren't working out the way you want them or had hope that they would, you have to have that positivity in your life, especially when negativity can jump off just like that. So that's all I want to share with you all. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.